Hi, I'm Caleb Janess. I'm a postdoc in the Machine Learning and Analytics Group in the Scientific Data Division. And today I'm going to tell you about our work visualizing local and global structure in neural network lost landscapes. Okay, so neural networks can be trained to learn complex features from scientific data. Here I'm showing a simple problem where we take input data, pass it through a network, uh, and we compare the output prediction to ground truth values. Now this allows us to compute a loss or a supervised loss, and then we can use this loss to optimize the weights of the neural network so that we can make better predictions. More recently, people have started incorporating physics into the learning process. Um, here, taking an underlying equation and computing the derivatives, and then we can add this to the loss function as a soft constraint. Um, okay. But once you've decided to use a neural network for your project, uh, there are still many decisions that need to be made, and this can often be difficult. So first, you need to choose a neural network architecture. Often, this can be determined uh, based on the type of data you're using, whether it's images or time series data. Um, and once you decide on the neural network architecture, uh, you have to decide how many parameters you want to include. Uh, so here, I'm showing the increasing width of a neural network. Um, and once you've, once you've decided that, there's still many other options related to the training process, such as the choice of optimizer, um, the amount of data, and the different batch sizes that you want to use. Um, so, uh, so the goal of our project is going to be developing visualization tools um, in order to help facilitate these decisions. Um, and, and along the way, helping understand what's going on uh, in, in machine learning and sort of open up the black box. Um, so some of this work is inspired by uh, previous efforts to visualize the uh, loss function as a landscape. So here, you can take a trained model and perturb it in different directions and reevaluate the loss. Now, what this does is it gives you this landscape view of the loss function. And what they found was that the structure of this loss landscape relates to things like model architecture. So here, I'm showing a very simple model on the left and then on the right, I'm showing what's called a ResNet, which incorporates these residual connections. And on the left, you can see there's a very rough and maybe difficult to optimize lost surface. And on the right, you have this very smooth surface. And what they found is that the, the model on the right has a better generalization performance, which means it performs better on data that it hasn't seen. And so they found that this related to the smoothness of the local lost landscape. Um, now, more recently, our group has started trying to combine global structure and local properties of neural network lost landscapes uh, to reveal different phases of learning. And so we, we sort of separated this into globally uh, connect, globally well-connected and globally poor-connected uh, and local aspects of lost landscape, like the sharpness or flatness. And what you can see is this breaks down into four uh, different groups. You can further subdivide the last group based on how similar different checkpoints are. Um, but this gives us sort of prototypical models that we might expect to see in a, in a lost function. And it goes beyond the local lost landscape that we just talked about. Okay, so what you can do is you can you can take uh, different models trained across various hyperparameters. So what we're looking at here is uh, the width of a model on the x-axis and a the batch size on the y-axis. This is what we call a temperature parameter, or, or how fast the training uh, training of your model is. Okay, so we're looking at test accuracy, and this is the again the generalization performance, and we can see that this uh, there's different phases of learning. Um, that capture different levels of test accuracy. And we can see that our toy models map onto, uh, onto this surface. So we have the high barriers, uh, low energy path. Here's a high barrier with smooth. Uh, and here we have uh, the yeah low mode connectivity, but uh, very similar or dissimilar models. Um, so now you might ask, well, how do we compute these things? And where are we getting these toy models from? And then we'll talk about some tools introduced by the machine learning community. Um, for measuring local properties and global structure. So some things, some things we're going to look at include the Hessian eigenvalues, which capture the local sharpness of the lost landscape or the curvature. Um, CK similarity captures uh, representational differences between two models. You can look at layer-wise or model-wise differences. Um, and then mode connectivity measures the loss along a path between two models and essentially captures the height of barriers that are separating two different uh, models. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about our, our platform that combines all of these ideas. We call it Lost Lens, and it's a visual analytics platform for machine learning. And I know this is a lot, so I'm going to step through some of the individual components um, and explain what's going on. So first, we start with the idea of a node. In our, in our framework, a node corresponds to a single neural network that has been initialized and then trained to some optimal solution. Now, you can reinitialize the network and train it to different optimal solutions. 
Um, and each one of these is what we call a checkpoint. And each, yeah, each one of these is what we call a checkpoint. And here we're showing this uh, annotated in several different ways. So we can annotate this with the performance of a checkpoint, um, such as the error or accuracy. And we also include the local metrics, such as the Hessian eigenvalues that capture the sharpness. Um, we, can, we also add some model labels or some other information uh, that relate to the individual checkpoint. So once we have two checkpoints, we can connect them by an edge. This is where we use the mode connectivity that I mentioned, and we draw a thicker or a wider edge uh, if they are better connected. So if they have a, if they have a better mode connectivity, and we'll draw a smaller edge or, or indicate lower connectivity um, with that thinner thinner edge between them. Okay, so now we have a global layout which is based on the CK similarity. So again, this is the representational similarity. We compute this between every pair of models. And we use this to do some sort of dimensionality reduction to create a two-dimensional view. Now, in this view, the further that two checkpoints are away from each other, the further or the less similar they are. And the closer they are in this view, uh, the more similar they are. Um, so let's go back to this initial view. When you open up Lost Lens, uh, you're showed, you, or we show this global structure uh, with some of these annotated local properties. Um, you can select one of the checkpoints and we will show the local lost landscape along with some additional metrics from topological data analysis to help capture the shape of the land, the local landscape. You can select a second model and we'll also show the local structure there. Um, and then there's also a semi-global view which captures model, compar model comparison. So we're comparing performance. Uh, here we're also showing layer-wise CK similarity to show how different layers are similar to each other. Uh, and this is one of the flexible parts of the, the framework where depending on if you're doing classification or regression, we can we can show different things. Um, so this, what I've been showing you has been a case study of one of the physics informed neural networks that I mentioned earlier. And I'm gonna go into some of the background of what the problem is that we're looking at. And then I'll show you some insights that our framework has provided. So, so I introduced PINs as a way of incorporating physics into uh, the neural network and the training process. Um, and it, while it's a promising approach, uh, there's some caveats. So they can be difficult to train and they can also fail to predict uh, the solution to simple physical problems. So here we're looking at a one dimensional convection or advection problem where we have this beta parameter corresponding to the velocity or wave speed. So as I said before, we can incorporate this in to the loss function by adding this term that we would like to be uh, minimized. Um, and in some cases, the, the neural network can do a very good job of predicting uh, the, ex the exact solution. But as I mentioned, in other cases, when we found as this beta parameter or as this wave speed is increased, uh, the, 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 the pin can actually fail to predict the correct output solution. So, when we start, when we go into our lost lens framework, we can look at the local structure. Um, and one thing we can see is that on the left, I'm showing these, the low wave speed and on the right, I'm showing the uh, higher wave speed. And we can see that as we increase the wave speed, the local, loss, la the local loss landscape becomes increasingly complex. We see higher loss and more barriers between them. We're also showing uh, what's called a merge tree that captures saddle points and minima uh, to sort of highlight some of the structure that, we're, that isn't seen in the contour plot. Um, but what we can do is map on those toy models that I talked about to show uh, the to show which you know possible models correspond to each. So we can see that the 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 model that succeeds may correspond to these smoother structures, where the model that fails corresponds to maybe a rougher uh, a rougher landscape. Okay, and we can further distinguish um, the two, or we can further distinguish you know which which sort of landscapes we're seeing by looking at the global structure. So this is where these other metrics come into play. And we can see that as we increase wave speed, um, we actually see lower connectivity and less similar models. So we can map on the prototypical example, uh, prototype examples, and we can see that uh, when the model's failing, we may see a higher barrier between uh, different minima. And when the model succeeds, uh, we're seeing low mode connectivity, a smoother landscape, uh, and lower or more similarity between the models, which may be due to the, the soft constraint that we're placing on the problem. Okay, so yeah, that's it. Um, I would like to thank uh, my advisors and other people working on this project. And I'd like to point out that we are writing this up in a paper and we're looking for new users. So check out our, yeah, so check out our GitHub uh, Lost Lens and feel free to reach out if you have any questions.
Um, and thank you for your time.